What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you a look at Outward's Definitive Edition, releasing what should be today on May 17th. But that said, before we go any farther, this video is brought to you by Coke Media through their gaming label publisher known as Prime Matter. First and foremost, let's talk a little bit about what Outward actually is as a game, though I know at least a bit of my audience is already well aware of it, as they've actually requested that I play Outward for a review previously. But Outward itself is an open-world action RPG that uses a lot of survival mechanics. Originally releasing in 2019, the game was noted as being quite challenging and requiring proper preparation as well as taking care of your character's basic needs like food, water, and sleep. You can play the game as co-op via local split screen or online. So if you find yourself struggling to survive out in the wilds, you may just want to bring along a friend to help you out, because the world of Outward can be pretty unforgiving. In fact, just things like simple monsters might give you a disease, eating or drinking from unsavory sources might cause your character a simple indigestion or give you a disease. But the core premise of Outward is that you take a character who is not some chosen champion, but rather an everyday person who can succeed or fail in their quest in most cases simply just to survive. The world of Outward is also quite interesting as there are factions to side with, choices to be made, and exactly how you navigate these things is of course up to you. The part that I found the most intriguing is that survival seems to be a pretty core part of Outward's world in that a lot of society, if you will, focuses around people's bloodlines and not just them in particular. For instance, if your ancestor did something wrong, you might be hit with what is called a blood price over time and honestly generations even. And then other factions, of course, aren't big fans of this and would prefer to do something different. So there's a bit of interplay surrounding how the bloodlines are looked at and how these blood prices are exacted, which I think is pretty interesting. Now, some other unique things before we dive into exactly what the Definitive Edition will be bringing to the table are that Outward uses a constant auto-saving system, meaning that much in the way of a game like, say, Elden Ring or something similar, you don't have multiple save files to work with, the game constantly saves after, you, so whatever progress you're making is the progress that you have to live with, at least for that character. But something that really intrigues me about Outward in particular is their defeat scenarios. So despite the world of Outward being quite a challenging, brutal place in certain cases, you can't actually die per se. Rather, when you are defeated, you'll be presented with a defeated scenario, which might see your character drug off to a local bandit camp or drug into a wolf's cave, or if you're lucky, a a passing stranger might just take pity on you and bring you back to the nearest town. You'll be able to recover your equipment, which will be nearby, and the main downside of being defeated in combat this way, because you don't really take much in the way of a penalty, is simply that each of these defeat scenarios will cost you a certain amount of in-game time. Because, again, in Outward, you're just a regular person, so time and the world is passing and carrying on in your absence. As such, while none of the main quests can be failed per se, parts of them will change if you take too long to do them. So there is a bit of dynamic elements to certain main quests, which I thought was a really cool touch and I wanted to mention it here. All of those things about the actual game itself mentioned, let's talk about the specific Definitive Edition changes. Starting with the balancing. So the difficulty curve did see a bit of a tweak with the Definitive Edition, but probably in a way some people might find surprising. In fact, the end game, the higher level monsters, have actually had their stats and HP, etc., adjusted upward, primarily their defensive stats, so they're actually a bit harder because apparently in testing it was found that some of these late game creatures were actually quite easy, so they wanted to up the difficulty on the late game via some defensive buffs to the in-game monsters. In addition to that, the Definitive Edition actually comes with both DLCs that were previously released for the title, this being the Soroborians as well as the Three Brothers. Both of these DLCs added content and and mechanics, etc., to specific areas of the game. However, with the Definitive Edition, some of those mechanics have been added into the base game zones, if you will. So with the Definitive Edition, you'll be able to run into some of the DLC-related content in the rest of the game outside of the specific areas for them. In addition to these things, the protection system saw a bit of an overhaul, so there is, of course, gear and outward to equip your survivor with, but this usually comes in the form of a bit of a trade-off. Protection, 
which is granted by heavier armors, usually comes at the cost of making your character slower. Now, because of this trade-off previously, a lot of people preferred resistance as opposed to protection, simply because moving slower and higher stamina costs as a result of heavier armor wasn't everybody's cup of tea. So now, protection not only applies to physical damage, but to impact resistance as well, which means your character is less likely to stagger. In addition to those things, in terms of balance, the game also saw some fundamental changes to the materials sample system from the Three Brothers DLC, as well as towns. So in Three Brothers, there were material samples that would kind of be dropped randomly for rare resources. Well, with this particular change, you can now trade in three of any of them for a specific type of the one you're actually after, which will help characters searching for specific stuff in that DLC have a bit of an easier time. And then we have the towns. Now, the towns actually saw a pretty substantial change. Basically, in that every seven in-game days, they will actually reset now, which includes player-dropped items. Previously, the character could drop things like tents, etc., to rest and things in town just out in the open, which is noteworthy because with these town resets it will affect the items that you've dropped, but it will also reset all of the things that you can find and kind of gather up around town. Now we do have a few other things to mention in terms of the definitive edition still, and those are the overhaul to the illness distribution, so enemies in general saw kind of wide changes to how they could apply illnesses to your character, so some enemies when they hit you have the chance to actually give you a disease, and the distribution distribution of those illnesses and what enemies can give them to you has been reworked a bit. As I mentioned, there are also new defeat scenarios, so whenever your character gets defeated, there will be new defeat scenarios that returning players will not have seen before. And then, in addition to all those major things, we have several quality of life changes. For starters, there are notifications to go along with the defeat scenarios now, so they make a bit more sense. The quest log will actually have dates for the quest now, as some of these quests do have timed components to them. And the quest log will now tell you that information, which is pretty helpful. The crafting UI got an overhaul and a scrolling ability. You can now remove campfires and plant tents when you put them down on the ground. Some changes to how your player stash works, etc. And these are just the major changes that are coming with the Definitive Edition. There are actually smaller tweaks and changes, etc. But obviously we focused on the big major stuff that people are really going to want to know about. And last but not least, before I leave you guys, if you already own... Outward, as well as the Three Brothers DLC, then you will be able to receive a free copy of the Definitive Edition as well. So there you guys go. There is a look at Outward and its Definitive Edition, which is of course out now. There will be a link in the description below. So if you want to check the game out, I'd highly encourage you to do so, as there's no better time to play Outward than now, frankly, with this Definitive Edition. But that's all I've got for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.